Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here, back in the home weather office after being gone for nearly a month here on the 26th of March. In this update, I've got some concerning news to share with you all as the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk of severe weather for Saturday and Sunday. And then we have to keep an eye on another big storm system by the middle of next week that could have another slight risk issued in days to come. So without further ado, let's get on with the video because there is a lot to talk about in this video because of the severe weather across the Pacific Northwest. We'll briefly talk about that. And then, of course, more severe weather this weekend and also, again, for the middle of next week. Yeah, very active pattern is continuing throughout much of March and now to end March into early April it's going to remain very active. So let's move on forward with this and you can see that there is going to be some severe thunderstorms developing this afternoon, maybe a tornado, some very large hail, some gusty winds over Oregon and Washington. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a severe thunderstorm watch over these areas because of the high confidence in severe weather for the Portland, Salem, Oregon, including for Washington, as well as uh, for Seattle. Now, going forward into Friday and Saturday, looks pretty good overall. We're not looking at a whole lot of weather activity going on in terms of the severe weather department, but we do have a cluster of storms that do develop down here across the southeastern Texas region such as Dallas-Fort Worth, Austin, Texas, Corpus Christi. If you're in Houston, Texas, that's going to be the thing. And then, of course, more storms impacting the Pacific Northwest and Northern California throughout the weekend, bringing much colder temperatures. Yesterday was 86 degrees. Today, just 70 degrees. So a near 16 to 18 degree drop in temperatures in the last 24 hours for my area. And then tomorrow, it's going to be in the low 60s. And then by this weekend, Probably going to get close to the upper 50s. Now, a lot cooler than being in the summer like weather pattern that we had a couple of or yesterday and the day before. Yeah, big changes are here to stay. Now, for the weekend, this is what's going to end up happening. We have an area of low pressure that develops over the high plains, very classic for springtime. We have a shower and thunderstorm activity going on in say, Louisiana and Arkansas and Mississippi. And there's going to be this stationary front that drapes itself across much of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes region. There's some subtleties to this on where this actually sets up because it's going to determine on where our severe weather will actually overspread. And so going forward here over the next um, several, or in the next couple of days, this is Saturday, and this is where we have the showers and thunderstorms across, if you are in Illinois, if you're in the deep south here, um, not so much in the way of convective nature. There looks to be some convectiveness to that, uh, but it's really going to be on Sunday. That's going to be the big day to really watch. Um, Saturday, slight risk is more questionable, but Sunday looks to be the day to really watch for se severe weather that could be significant. All right. And this is Sunday morning, and then this is Sunday afternoon. We have Boeing segments that show up here on the model. Here's one Boeing segment over Louisiana and Arkansas. Here's another Boeing segment right here moving across Indiana into Ohio. Here's another Boeing segment that shows up here over southern, Louis or southern Missouri. That is getting my states all mixed up these days. Haven't been on the platform in a while here. Haven't been following up on the weather very much until yesterday. All right, so with that, um, there will be the risk here of large hail damaging 75 mile an hour wind gusts. I think that's gonna be the biggest threat out of this slight risk will be the hail and wind driven slight for Sunday. And then we got more storms coming in for California. And you know, for this time of the year with a high enough sun angle with better surface heating, we could have some severe weather even in California in the Central Valley. It is tornado season or severe weather season until we get into at least mid-May. And that's when it kind of backs. Actually more like by the middle and the end of April, it starts backing off for the Central Valley. But this is the time of the year to really watch things. Uh, when you get systems like this, that colder air aloft, you get destabilization that happens, you can get some nasty stuff out of that. All right, 
Um, actually, in a, a long story short, last week actually, it was on Monday, I was working at Safeway and our power went out for like five seconds because of lightning and thunder and we had hail up the size of quarters very close to where I was working. So that goes to show you that was a general risk of thunderstorms and it ended up being severe warned. So goes to show you that just because there's a general risk, don't don't ever cancel out that there won't be severe weather. There could be an isolated storm here and there that may, wants to go severe. Okay, but long story short, uh, this is going to be the next system to really watch. I went ahead of myself right here. This is Sunday into Monday, and then we'll have to keep an eye on this little guy for day six and day seven. This could be another risk to keep an eye on for with another slight down the road, with another... Um, outbreak of severe weather here. I should not have said outbreak, but this looks pretty dynamic. A lot better than what we're seeing this weekend. So this would be the next storm to really watch. And this would be for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. And this would be in early April, April the 2nd, um, with that risk of severe weather. And this would continue all the way throughout the next eight to nine days. Now, why is the severe weather going to be a thing for this weekend into early next week? Well, when we take a look at the 500 millibar chart here, this is the upper level winds at 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. And we have this little bit of a trough, this little notch in the flow here. This is going to be that trough that ejects into the high plains on Saturday and Sunday. And as it does so, we are going to get some difluence aloft, some thunderstorms that do develop, mainly on Sunday now, because the timing of that trough is a little later here on the European than it was yesterday and the day before where it was running a little faster. So now it looks like mainly Saturday late afternoon into the evening hours and primarily on Sunday is going to be the day to watch for severe weather here in the Ozarks and the upper Midwest. And then going forward, that moves on by, and then we get another trough here that moves through. Now, this is mainly t uh, positively tilted, but due to the deep layer vertical wind shear in the atmosphere with this strong belt of flow, this is for Wednesday next week. That is why I think we could have some supercellular development along to go with multi-clustered storms as well into the upper Midwest and the Ozarks. We'll have to keep an eye on this as this is still seven to eight days away. And a lot can change between now and then. But it's something to consider here uh, when looking ahead at any severe weather events coming up throughout the early part of April. Because this is a fairly energetic storm or a very energetic ribbon of flow in the atmosphere. Now looking at the 500 millibar vorticity plot here, this is showing us where there's upper level energy, upper level ascent, and difluence aloft. And when we go forward here, you can see there is some upper level energy that is involved. Here's a little bit of a PVU streamer. Here's another area of PVU uh, uplift in the atmosphere, and that's going to help to contribute to some of these storms. That moves through, right? And then we get our next system that moves on through. And this is going to be the one that we really have to watch. There's a lot of upper level support here for at least the potential for some severe weather for Wednesday and Thursday next week, especially where we get some difluence aloft here, where these heights kind of separate. This is where we would have some upper level energy and um, positive or, or negative vorticity advection or positive vorticity advection, however you want to call it, moving into the high plane. Now, because latest models do indicate that there will be some vigorous convection across Washington and Oregon over the next 12 to 24 hours, there is a slight risk of severe weather over Portland, Oregon, Salem, Oregon, stretching into Seattle, Washington. You don't see this very often, nor do you see a rare risk of a 5% for tornadoes in a very populated area. So make sure you have your weather radio going because there will be the risk here of tornadoes today along to go with a significant risk for large hailstones. Two, maybe three inch hailstones across the Portland metro area, the Columbia River Gorge, stretching into Seattle, Washington. Boy, my friend Keith Evans lives up here in just north of Seattle. Yeah, you're under a slight risk, brother, for severe weather today. So make sure you do have your weather radio going because this is a pretty big concern. All right. 
The good news here is the wind outlook doesn't look so significant at all. There's only a 5% risk for damaging winds today across the Portland metro area as well as Seattle, Washington. That's the marginal risk that extends all the way up there to the furthest north extent here of Washington. Now, after discussing the Pacific Northwest, there is a slight risk of severe weather for the day five and day six outlook for the upper Midwest, for the Ozarks, for the deep south, for the southeast, and for the mid-Atlantic. This goes all the way through Sunday now, all the way through Monday, and now even into Tuesday. All right, so we have a couple of days here that you all need to be aware of when it comes to this slight risk of severe weather. I am working on making really good detailed graphics for you all. Um, it's taking me a long time to make this all in Photoshop, but once it is done, we will start using that a little bit more, nailing down some cities in great detail and trying to up these videos a little bit more. But anyways, if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Wednesday on the 26th of March. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.